today I'm reviewing the Paula's Choice 25% Vitamin C and Glutathione Clinical Serum. And really quick, I just want to say, purchase all these products with my own money. I'll never waste your time with sponsor ads or videos. So if that's something you're into, like, subscribe, share the video, check out the links below, or check out my Patreon community. Okay, Lincoln has left the building. He's gone. He was really assaulting me in between videos. Thanks, so. Ike's still here, though. And uh, anyway, so Lincoln has some sharp elbows when he jumps on your lap. Man, those elbows. Right in there. Yeah, they're sharp. Very sharp. So anyway, I don't think he's been outside yet this morning, today. He's not a big fan of snow, so I think he tries to not have to go as little as pot. Has he been out today? I don't think he's went out. Yeah, he was out today. Oh, was he? Okay. Okay, that's good. Okay, anyway. Probably sidetracked. So... Okay, so I'm always on the hunt for new vitamin C products, and anyway, sometimes they're great, and sometimes not as wonderful. So, okay, so they say this clinical level serum features highly stable 25% vitamin C to visibly improve uneven skin tone, radiance, elasticity, firmness, without irritation, potent 25% vitamin C targets stubborn discoloration and sun damage, glutathione minimizes an irritation and boosts skin antioxidant supply. So, and then they say gap technology reduces oxidative stress and targets discoloration. And they say lightly hydrating serum for all textures. So I agree with most of that. And then I'll talk about uh, what it delivers on, this promises uh, in a minute. So, okay, first criteria is packaging. Uh, it's a, I think it's an airless, airless uh, pump bottle, plastic. I think you can unscrew it if you wanted to, maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. I'm not going to mess with it. Either way, it's not ascorbic acid, so it's not as sensitive to exposure to light and air as if it did have ascorbic acid. But um, anyway, no issues with the packaging. In terms of denatured drying types of alcohol, it does not contain any of those. In terms of fragrance, it's kind of interesting for Paul's Choice because usually they're fragrance-free. They do include a fragrance ingredient. However, the fragrance ingredient is actually a beneficial ingredient. Some fragrance ingredients can be irritating, like essential oils, lime, citrus oils, things like that. And then there's certain ones that are beneficial, such as vanilla, and that's the fragrance ingredients they included. Vanilla actually has skin protecting benefits. I just can't think of a Paul's Choice ingredient where even though the fragrance was okay, they included it. Typically they're, and you know what, to be honest, the scent, I don't notice it at all. So maybe they included it to cover up. Vitamin C ingredients sometimes have a scent to them, so maybe they included it to cover that up. Uh, so really not noticeable, and I guess if you're going to have uh, vanilla in a product it's good for your skin so that's a good thing there's other chamomile is another ingredient that gives things a scent that's beneficial or sometimes green tea things like that citrus and essential oils typically not beneficial so okay the manufacturing location for this one is the u.s so no issues with that so ease of use it's got a really nice lotion texture to it i wouldn't call it a serum per se it's more of a lotion but anyway that's kind of mincing words either way. So uh, a little bit of this goes a long way. One pump, one and a half pumps is enough. So I say apply on the face and neck for optimal results. Use AM and PM. And for daytime use, uh, be sure to use sunscreen afterwards. Personally for me, vitamin C is my daytime product. And retinoids, exfoliants, azelaic acid, yada, yada, yada. It's my evening product. So I didn't use this morning and evening. And to be honest, what size is this? One ounce. The bottle's going to go very fast if you're using morning and evening. You're better off just using it in the morning as a protective ingredient, uh, a protective product, and then using other products in your evening routine. Uh, unless your main focus is brightening, that's a different issue. But I don't necessarily... There's other specific brightening products that are probably a little bit better. So anyway, so I recommend use this morning routine. It sets to kind of a natural, slightly radiant finish. Uh, it's a little sticky, but not terribly so, not really noticeably sticky. And you're going to use other moisturizers or things over it, so it's not going to be an issue. But it soaks in really nice. It feels nice on the skin and no issues with it pilling uh, under other products or things like that. Uh, so anyway, so really nice texture and things like that. It ha has a high amount of silica in it which I wonder if that's what gives it that smooth kind of blurred appearance. Uh, probably silica. I don't see it in a lot of products, but anyway, so there you go. So very smoothing, very smoothing in appearance, which you don't necessarily need in, at night. Okay, uh, antioxidants and beneficial ingredients in this one. So we've got tech, 
tetrahexyl vesicle ascorbate, which is a stable and oil soluble version of vitamin C. More research is needed on all these derivatives. I'm actually kind of surprised to see Paula's Choice using the derivatives, uh, given the fact that they're kind of research based brand. Uh, the derivatives are all very promising, there's just not a lot of conclusive evidence on them. So it is kind of surprising to see them using it, but it's still uh, tetrahexyl desical ascorbate may be a great alternative to ascorbic acid. It's stable. Uh, it may help with collagen production, give the antioxidant protect, protection, and help with brightening skin that vitamin C does. More research really needs to be done on it to prove it, but it is a very promising uh, product and stable. So if you're somebody that uses ascorbic acid but can't use it fast enough before it goes bad, might be a good alternative to try. Uh, okay, next up, we've got a sorbyl glucoside, another stable and easy to formulate vitamin C derivative. May also help with collagen production, antioxidant protection, and brightening. Again, more research probably needs to be done on that one as well. Uh, okay, next up, we've got apple fruit extract, which is a humectant as well as skin brightening ingredient. We've got hydrogenated lecithin, which is an emollient. Rice bran extract, a good skin protecting ingredient. Uh, vitamin E, antioxidant emollient. We've got glutathione, which is a, it's kind of a newer ingredient. It's really being talked about a lot more lately. Uh, so it's kind of newer in terms of research and a lot of people are starting to talk about it more than it has been. It may function as an anti-inflammatory ingredient as well as uh, can help with eczema and psoriasis, uh, prone skin. Uh, it's a naturally occurring ingredient that occurs in our skin, but as we age, like everything else, the amount of it goes down and we age more, just like collagen and elastin and everything. So <laughs> anyway, uh, more studies really need to be done on it, but it's it's a promising brightening ingredient, so it might be worth trying. We've got sunflower seed extract, which is an antioxidant. We've got urea, which is a natural moisturizing factor that can help with dryness by locking in hydration and improving skin barrier. Um, high percentages of urea are found uh, effective in a bunch of skin disorders, such as excessive dryness, malfunctioning skin barrier, uh, psoriasis, eczema, uh, and seborrheic dermatitis. So might be a very promising ingredient. Urea is great. I'm not sure the amount in this one, but there's a lot of great urea products out there too. Okay, so we've got some sugar-derived humectants. We've got mannitol, trehalose, and glucose. Then we've got sodium PCA, which is a skin identical ingredient. We've got rosemary extract, skin soothing antioxidant. And then we've got ascorbic acid at the very end, which is vitamin C antioxidant and skin protecting. So a nice list of ingredients in there. No issues at all with that. Uh, some humectants, some protecting ingredients, which makes it great for the daytime use. Okay, in terms of animal testing, this is cruelty free. So no issues with that. In terms of performance, this is super lightweight. It fits in well into my winter skin routine because it's more hydrating than the average ascorbic acid serum. The average ascorbic acid serum isn't very hydrating, I find, unless there's a lot of vitamin E included in there. So this one's more hydrating, so it's a really nice addition and good transition from uh, summer to fall and winter. Uh, I could see how those with less stubborn hyperpigmentation could find this uh, helpful in terms of brightening. My hyperpigmentation, pretty stubborn. I didn't notice a whole lot in terms of brightening, but I really don't with a lot of products because I've used so many brightening products and I think I'm pretty maxed out on that. So that's probably not a good, in my experience with that, it's probably not the best indicator for other people's experience with it. Um, I do think my regular ascorbic acid serum gives me a little bit more help in terms of brightening than this one does. But um, anyway, I could probably use them together maybe. I don't know. I mean, this one's got 25% derivatives, so I don't know. It's a thought I have. It's a thought I've had with other vitamin C derivative products, too. Could I use them together? I guess it just depends on how sensitive my skin is. So, um, Okay, for acne-prone skin, we've got dimethicone, cetyl alcohol, vitamin E, hexylene glycol, and sorbitin isosterate. So for acne-prone skin, there's five ingredients of note. So not terribly friendly for acne prone skin. Um, for sensitive skin, this will probably be okay. Um, in terms of the promises, I think it delivers on most of them. Antioxidant protection, skin brightening, and hydration, it delivers on all those and it feels still really nice on your skin. 
Uh, okay, the downside, the price. So this is a full size one ounce, 30 milliliters, retails for 62 bucks. So it's expensive, which is a kind of a bummer because that's a lot of money. And if you're going to use it more in the evening, it's going to go within a month, I bet. So, okay, last but not least, in terms of the it factor, if you're looking for an ascorbic acid alternative with some brightening ingredients, this one's a nice one to try. It's an interesting option. Uh, I do like the combination of different vitamin C derivatives instead of just relying on one. Uh, at this point, I couldn't find any super close dupes or alternatives to it. I think uh, the closest one I can think of that comes to mind is the Skin and Lab Vitamin C Brightening Serum. That one uses several different vitamin C derivatives in it. So I think that one probably be the closest alternative that I'd probably recommend. Um, anyway, so uh, this one's nice. Worth checking out for a lot of different skin types, especially for non-stubborn hyperpigmentation. This one might be uh, worth checking out. So um, anyway, so with the 10 being a perfect score, this one an 8. Well, we're checking out, except for the very acne-prone skin. So, anyway, interested hearing from you guys if you had a chance to check this one out yet or not, and if you have what your thoughts are. So, uh, leave a comment. Love hearing from you guys, and stay tuned for more tomorrow. Thanks so much. Bye, guys.